Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the heads thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down, and I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression, for righteousness, but behold, a cry. I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. Let's look into the similitude of the vineyard being eaten up. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. Here we find that the vineyard is eaten up by the pastors. Let's have a deeper look into what God says about the pastors, leaders, and shepherds. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord. Here we find that they will scatter God's flock. Now let us look into the scattering. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Here we find that God's people will be scattered by the pastors in the dark and cloudy day. We can also find that the vineyard is connected to the dark and cloudy day through the similitude of no rain. And they shall pass through it hardly bestead and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their god and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. So here we see because of hunger People will curse God and be filled with darkness. Now let's have a look at the dark and cloudy day. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Here we can find the similitude of the locusts coming out of the darkness. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Now let's compare these locusts with the locusts in Joel. That which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left hath the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep, and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste, and barked my fig tree, he hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Here we see in both Joel and Revelation that the locusts have mouths like lions, and that in Joel we find that the locusts eat up the vineyard. Now let's continue from the scattering. 
Yet will I leave a remnant, that ye may have some that shall escape the sword among the nations, when ye shall be scattered through the countries. Here we see a remnant that comes out of the scattering. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward, and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Here we see that the remnant will bear fruit. We can find that at this time will come the latter rain. Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. We can also find that the fruit is connected to the end of the world. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, A basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, The end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. We can find that both the bearing of the fruit and the end of the world is called the harvest. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law.